Since this question is talking about three consecutive terms of a decreasing GP, so it is possible that we want to try to let the first term of the GP be A and the common ratio be R, which means that for these three terms, we are going to code them as general terms of the GP. So the, maybe the first term of these three terms can be, for example, A R to the power of N minus one. It is the general expression to represent a GP with the first term as A and the common ratio as R which means that the next term is going to be multiplying this by r. It is going to be a r to the power of n. And the last term is going to be a r to the power of n plus 1. And according to what the question says, if we were to multiply all these three terms together, it is equal to 5, 8, 3, 2. And this is not good. You know why this is not good? Because this is introducing unnecessary unknowns into the equation. Because we can actually tweak this a little bit and we can actually remove one of the unknowns. Let me show you how that can be done instead of going for the first term of the GP to be A. So what if we were to let the first of the three terms of the GP be A instead? So let me cancel away this. Instead of first term of the GP be A, I'm going to redefine A. I'm going to let the first term, the first of the three terms of the GP, the first of the three terms of this GP be A and the common ratio be R, which means that instead of going for something that is like this, we are going to go for, since the first term of these three consecutive terms is equal to A, that means the next term is going to be A times R and the last term, the third term is going to be A times R squared, multiplying it by R again. So if I were to multiply all these three terms together, this will also be 5, 8, 3, 2. And now we have one less unknown. We, we, are, we have eliminated n. So now we have a a to the power of 3, r to the power of 3. This is equal to 5, 8, 3, 2. Or we can also definitely see this as a r, the whole thing to the power of 3. This is equal to 5, 8, 3, 2. Which means that a r is going to be the cube root of this and this is equal to 18. So I have formed my first equation that involves a and r. And the next thing that I want to do is make use of the second piece of information that is given to me. If the first term, the first term now is a, okay, which means that the first term is going to be now a minus away reduced by 24. So a minus 24. And the next term is still going to be the same thing. So the next term is going to be a r and the third term is going to be a r squared. And according to what the question says, this now forms for us the consecutive terms of an AP, which means that from here to here, from here to here, they're going to follow the same common difference, which means that based on this piece of information, we can say that AR, the second term, minus away the first term, which is A minus, um, this is going to be 24, A minus 24. This is equal to the third term, which is AR squared minus away the second term, AR. And we actually do know what is AR. AR is 18. So we can replace this by 18 minus away A, plus this is 24 this is going to be equal to i'm going to rewrite this as a r multiplied by r this is equal to 18. so now I, if i were to express a and make it the subject that means what we have is uh, a if i were to shift it over to the right hand side and uh, i'm going to shift all these constants over to the left hand side which will give me a 60 and this is going to be replaced by 18 so it is going to be minus 18 r so now I'm going to call this equation number one and this I'm going to treat it as equation number two. And we have two equations that involves A and B. I can now solve them as simultaneous equation. So let's try that. So I'm going to be substituting two into one. So substituting equation number two into equation number one, replacing this A here. We have a 60 minus 18R multiplied by R. This is equal to 18. So this time this is 18 r square if i have to move it over to the right hand side so 18 r square this i'm going to so going to move it over to the other side so i have a minus 60 r then plus 18 this is equal to zero we can simplify this by dividing this equation by six so this is 3 r square minus 10 r 
plus uh, this is divided by 6 it is 3 this is equal to 0 we can factorize this and it will become 3 minus 1 and uh, sorry 3 r minus 1 and r minus 3 this is equal to 0 this tells me that r must be equal to 1 over 3 this is fine or r is equal to 3 and this is not fine why because the question says that this is a decreasing geometric progression which means that r must be something that is between 0 to 1 so that when I multiply a term by r, it is going to become smaller, and I multiply by r again, it's going to become smaller. So if r is equal to 3, this will become an increasing geometric progression. So we are going to be rejecting this. Okay, and the reason is because we are looking at a decreasing geometric progression. So we have solved for r, which means that we can now find out what is the first term also. The first term is a. So therefore, I can now find out what is the first term. a is going to be equal to 18 divided by r, so it's going to be 18 divided by 1 over 3 this will give us the first term as 54 so what are the three consecutive terms the first term is going to be 54 the next term is going to be 54 multiplied by 1 over 3 and that is 18 and the last term is going to be 18 multiplied by 1 over 3 that is going to give me a 6. in part b we are given that tn represent the total area of the triangles remove after n stages of the process which means that t1 is going to be the area of the triangle that is removed after the first stage so this is the area that is removed and uh, how do we calculate this area because we are given that this figure over here is a triangle with the sides according to what the question says as one and this is an equilateral triangle which means that the angle here is going to be 60 degrees and uh, this is also going to be one so in fact this area here which is removed after stage one is just uh, going to be one quarter of this area right because it is it is uh, divided into four equal size uh, rectangle uh, triangles so this here is going to be one quarter of this so that will give us t1 so t1 is going to be one quarter of the area of the triangle which is going to be half a, B, sine C. So one of the sides is 1, the other side is also 1. Then sine of the angle is going to be 60 degrees. This is equal to 1 over 8, 1 quarter times this. And sine 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2, which gives us a square root of 3 over 16. And that is what the question wants to show. Part 2 is sort of tricky because um, T10 here, we must be able to interpret it correctly in order for us to do part 2 correctly. Because T10 is not the area of the triangle that is removed during the 10th stage. T10, according to how Tn is being defined by the question, T10 is the total area of the triangles removed after 10 stages of the process. So T1 happened to be the triangle that is removed after stage 1, which also is the total. But if we were to look at just the area of the triangle that is removed during stage 2, let me write it down here. So area remove in stage two how do we calculate this area let us have uh, let us try to observe it together okay so do you realize that for the area of the triangle that is removed it is going to be this triangle this triangle and this triangle so this triangle in fact if i were to just put it back into this triangle that was removed in the previous part for example this if i were to put it back if i were to make use of this triangle it can be this triangle that is over here and this can be this triangle that is over here and this can be the triangle that is over here so um and this is dividing this is being divided into four equal size triangle which means that for those that are removed in stage two it is three quarter of this area and what is this area this area is t1 because that was what we have calculated previously which means that here three quarter of t1 is going to represent the area that is removed during the stage two process so it is going to be three quarter of t1 in fact, this is also true for stage 3. Let me write it down. So area that is removed only in stage 3. And if you were to just observe together with me for stage 3, let us take a look at this over here. Okay, stage 3, it, this right area is going to be removed. This area is going to be removed. This area is also going to be removed. And if I were to put this back into the this little triangle over here, this, this, this is just 3 quarter of this area. Okay, assuming that what I've drawn is um, equally sized, I mean it is the triangle when this is divided into four equally sized triangle. So this is going to become here, this triangle is going to become here, 
and this triangle is going to become here. So it's three quarter of this. The same goes for this. It is also going to be removed and three quarter of this. And this is also going to be three quarter. Okay, which means that if I were to total up all these three triangles, this one, this one, and this one, the area that is going to be removed is going to be three quarter of this, these three triangles over here. And that is this, which means that the area that is being removed during the third stage is three quarter. Okay, let me change the color of the ink. It is going to be three quarter of the area that is previously removed, which is the total area of these three triangles here. So it's going to be three quarter of three quarter of T1, which means that we will have this as three quarter to the power of two of T1. So for the fourth stage, it is going to be three quarter of this. For the fifth stage, it's going to be three quarter of the area that is removed during the fourth stage, which means that if I will talk about T10, T10 is the total now, okay? T10 is the area that is removed during the first stage, which is T1, plus the area that is removed during the second stage, which is now 3 over 4 T1. We have calculated that. The third stage is going to be 3 quarter square T1. So second stage, 3 quarter of T1. Third stage, 3 quarter square of T1. And we are looking at a total of 10 stages. So during the 10th stage, it is going to be 3 quarter to the power of 9 of T1. So what we have here now is a GP, a GP with the first term as T1. The common ratio is 3 quarter. The number of terms that we are looking at, there are 10 terms here, and this is going to be divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which is 3 quarter. And what is T1? T1, we have calculated it and showed that it is square root of 3 over 16. So I'm going to replace this by square root of 3, square root of 3 over 16, then 1 minus 3 over 4 to the power of 10, and this is going to be divided by 1 minus 3 quarter. And if I were to just press this in the calculator to calculate, this is equal to 0 0.409. In part 3, we should first try to interpret the meaning of this limit when n tends to infinity of tn. In fact, this is just like t infinity, right? So what is t infinity? t10 is this. So t infinity is this plus this plus this all the way up to infinity. So we have a sum of gp to infinity where the first term is t1 and a common ratio is 3 over 4. So first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio and the first term t1 is this square root of 3 over 16 divided by the common ratio 1 minus 3 quarter is this. So my final answer is going to be square root of 3 over 4.